In this video, we're going to talk about how to get into politics without a degree. Now, here's the simple truth. You do not need a degree. There are a lot of things that are more important to voters than a degree, whether it's college or some other degree. I'm going to tell you what they are and how you can overcome not having one and still be a great candidate for public office. Stick with me. There are four different ways to make up for the lack of a college degree qualification. Chances are you've already done many of them. I'm going to take you through them one by one so that you know other compelling things that you can say about yourself that make up for the lack of a college degree. Question number one, have you ever endured a hardship or a setback? or seen someone else that has done that, that made you absolutely passionate about fixing a problem? Do you have some great story to tell about some experience you had, something that you saw, something that you heard that made you passionate about asking for the power to fix a problem. That is a compelling reason for people to vote for you. If you have a story that you can tell to voters, that makes up for not having a college degree. And that's not the only one. Have you ever raised children? Have you been married? Have you served in the military? Have you ever served your community in a civic or charitable organization? Have you ever advanced or helped advance an important cause? That is also a qualification that voters take very seriously when they look at the biographical sketch of a candidate who's running for office. Have you ever volunteered in your community to help people who needed a hand up? Have you ever served in the Rotary or the Lions Club or perhaps the Kiwanis Club? Have you ever served an organization connected with United Way? Have you ever helped people register to vote? Have you ever served soup? at a homeless kitchen. These are qualifications that voters take very seriously because they demonstrate your compassion for people who live in your community. Let's talk about the important causes that you may have been involved with. Have you ever helped raise money for a school? Have you ever helped raise money for a nonprofit organization that serves the needy? Have you ever been active in advancing a cause in your community or part of a committee that's dedicated to fixing a problem too few know about that affect too many people. That is also another qualification for office and something that you have license to put on your resume. Now, let me get to a larger point about the whole college degree and credentials question here. During the course of a campaign, it's not the most important thing. Voters care a lot more about why you're running than your resume. This is the extent to which they care about your background and the things you've done in your resume. All they want to know is that you got your feet on the ground, that you are a citizen who cares about this community where you are running, that you have some passionate things or you're passionate about certain things that are going to fix a problem. The credentials don't matter as long as they know that you're not a clown or a buffoon running for office to pad your pocket or get on cable TV. This is what's really important to voters. It's what you're going to do for them. How are you going to improve their quality of life? What policies are you going to pursue that will enhance their standard of living. How are you going to make life better for them? What kind of wrongs are you going to right? Is there an injustice you want to fix? Is there something really important that only you can do with the power of the office that you seek that is really a compelling reason for them to vote for you? That is the most important part of your campaign message. Ultimately, it's why people either vote for you 
or against you. Now, if you have never done any of these things, it really doesn't matter. It's just that you need to do a few of these things and establish some record of involvement in your community, get involved with a service organization, do some of the things that I mentioned, go to a meeting where you meet influential people, go, volunteer, and do. If you're far enough ahead of the curve here, you can kind of fill in some things to demonstrate your compassion and concern for the people who live in your community. The other thing to do is read and pay attention to what's happening in your community because you may sometimes be surprised when an opportunity comes along the way. And I, I'm going to tell you a little story about something that I saw happen in a community where I once lived. It was on a Monday morning and the banner headline in the newspaper that in one particular neighborhood in that county, an African-American family from New York City had purchased a home in a white neighborhood. And some smart aleck teenagers got wind that this home had been purchased by a black family and who were still living in Brooklyn but planned to move about a month later. And they rode their bikes over to this house one night after dark and completely trashed it. They knocked holes in the front door. They broke the windows. They got inside the house and ripped the plumbing fixtures off the wall. They spray painted the walls. And the story was about what had happened to these poor people who had saved the money, put down a deposit, and had secured their mortgage. And this is what this community had done to their brand new house. A friend of mine read that story and he came out of his gourd. He was embarrassed for the county in which he lived. He decided he was going to do something about it because it offended every ounce of his moral code. So he got on the phone and he started calling contractors who could donate plumbing supplies and sheetrock to repair this home. And then he started calling unions who had carpenters in their union membership and plumbers and he talked them into donating free labor to fix this house up. And after they were all done and the house was put back in pristine condition and all the ugly stuff was made to go away and repainted, he invited that family from Brooklyn to come up for a ribbon cutting ceremony. Standing behind him were all the people who had helped put the house back together along with the family. He, he cut a ribbon and they walked into the house that was then in better condition than it was when they bought it. He got involved in a cause to right a profound wrong that happened in his community. Well, he became famous for what he had done. His picture was in the paper. The TV stations did stories about his leadership. A year later, he was elected to the most powerful position in the county as a county executive because so many people saw what he did that he became such a prominent citizen in that community for doing what he did that they made him the chief officer of the entire county of 300,000 people. If you don't have a long resume, Look for a cause to get involved with because you can become an overnight sensation if you fix something that needed to be fixed that no one else wanted to fix. Ultimately, what matters to voters are heroic acts like I just mentioned. Or, and in addition, what voters care most about in a political campaign is not your resume. As long as they know you got your feet on the ground, that's all they care about. It's what you're going to do for them. It's the problems you're going to fix for them or the way you're going to improve their quality of life or wrongs that you're going to right or injustices that you're going to correct, the policy initiatives that you want to put forward that will improve the way they live. Ultimately, that is what is most important to voters. And if you have a compelling message about what you're going to do for them, they won't care where you went to college. I mentioned that I had a free gift and it is this. In the description, you're gonna find a link to a campaign video, how to become a politician. I mentioned some things in there that you did not see in this video. I encourage you to watch it.